Okay, hello everybody and welcome um, to this verbling class. My name is Teacher Amy and today we're going to be looking at a class in my series of Around the World in 80 Days and today's country of choice is Iran. So um, we're going to be looking at some really interesting stuff about this intriguing and interesting country of which I know not much. Um, so if you don't know much about Iran either, perhaps you'd like to come along and join us as we read. Um, today's class is primarily a reading and pronunciation class, so we'll be practicing our reading skills, we'll be improving our pronunciation, and we'll also be learning some new vocabulary in context as we read about Iran. Um, so do come along in. I think there are some free slots if you'd like to join us. Um, come on in. And um, before we get started on our reading and before we say hello to our lovely students, I'll just let you know about two important pages that you can use to help you while you're here on Verbling with us. So the first one is my Facebook page. Um, check that one out. Um, we use this generally to just keep in touch with our students and to share ideas and information. Um, when I've had a really great class full of excellent ideas, I sometimes put some of them on there so you can take a look at what we've been doing recently. Um, and also if I come across something interesting during the week that I think will help you in your English learning experience or maybe just be something interesting or fun for you to look at, then um, I generally do post it on Facebook. So take a look if you're interested. The other uh, page that will be helpful to you is my Verming Teacher page. And um, this will give you a little bit more information on things like my classes and my schedule. So if you're interested in finding out when my next few classes are, take a look at my Verbing Teacher page and click on the blue follow button. And then you will be automatically notified um, of any upcoming classes. And there's also my calendar you can take a look at if you're interested in any private tutoring sessions. Um, then you can see my schedule. Do feel free to book a session with me, or if you want to find out more about it, then do write me a message using the, the Verbling messaging feature. Um, so quite a few things on the Verbling teacher pages that can help you out. Um, take a look at those two pages. They're there in the chat box for you right now. And now we're going to say hello and see who we've got this morning or this evening um, to practice our reading together. So firstly, we have Haida. Hello. Hello, how are you, teacher? I'm great, thank you, Haida. How are you? I got to know you pretty well the other day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. I'm fine, too. You look so uh, good today. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> um, it's raining here in New Zealand, where I am, so I don't know. I don't know why I look good today. I'm, I'm, I prefer sunny weather, but rain is okay. We need it, I guess. <laughs> Um, how is your studying going, Haida? Have you been studying hard? Uh, not too much. <laughs> not too uh, much? I'm yeah. watching the football. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, no. I don't like football too much. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> but I'm trying to keep up to date because I know lots of students do like it. And um, I live with a very, very fervent football fan. Um, who is continually updating me, so I don't have to watch anything. I just ask him what's going on, and he gives me the update, which is great. Yeah, you have a social uh, work, and you should learn about the daily stuff. <laughs> I know. It's, it's very important, but sport is not one of my areas of interest. I do my best, Haida. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, welcome to the class. Thank you. Um, and hello to Kako. Hey, how are you doing? Are you there, Kako? Yes, teacher. How Hi. are you? Nice to see I'm you again. Nice to see you, you too. I'm fine, thank you. And you? And I'm great. Are you enjoying the football, Kako? You're in Brazil, aren't you? Yes. I, I live in Rio. Yeah, absolutely. Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, have you been tuning into all of the football games? Yes, I I have watched some some games, mm -hmm. uh, especially Brazil games. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, well, that's yeah. good. Are you going to be watching it right to the end, even if Brazil get kicked out at any point? Or are you a, just a supporter of your own country? Yeah, I am supporting Brazil. Um, um, firstly, I, I was not, conf, not much confident on the team, mm -hmm. but uh, nowadays the team is more more integrated. Yes. It's playing uh, more uh, as a as a team properly. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> uh, they are they are improving their their tactics and uh, the I tactic. am, Yeah, their their tactic. Whoops. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. So you're I you're hope, feeling I hope, hopeful. I hope I hope Brazil will to the final. Maybe, okay. maybe we will be final. championship. <laughs> Champion, maybe. All right, excellent. Um, well, good luck to Brazil, Carco. Good luck. I hope they do Thank really you. well. Thank you. All right, welcome to the class. And who else do we have? We have Ala. Not sure how to say your name. Yes, teacher. Hello. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Is it Allah? Yes, that's right. Allah. All right. Nice to meet you. Where are you from, Allah? Uh, I'm from Jordan. From Jordan. I have a friend from uh, Jordan, um, but uh, she lives in Spain right now, so I haven't been in touch with her for a while. And yeah. tell me, um, why are you studying English? Uh, I'm studying English. I'm preparing uh, or uh, I'm planning to have a higher degree, PhD degree, and uh, I want to score a high score in, you know, exam, uh, English proficiency exam. Mm -hmm. So I need to improve my English, especially in uh, conversation. Yes, I need a really high score because I prefer to study in uh, one of the native speakers country, na native English speaker uh, speakers, US, United States or Canada, Australia, mm -hmm. New Zealand. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my plan. So, yeah, I need to <laughs> to improve. All right, wonderful. Well, it sounds like you're on your way to success. You're being here with us in a verbling class. Good start or good Thank you. middle. You've already started, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. All right, well, welcome to the class. Um, it's very nice to thank meet you, you Allah. Thank, thank you. Um, all right, so Haida, tell me, what research did you do before our class today? Would you like to share anything? Uh, okay. Uh, I did uh, some research about Kevin Sarai uh, because uh, the article was talking about Kevin, St Kevin Sarai's style rooms. Mm -hmm. And I did something. I did some uh, interesting thing. Uh, uh, learn. I did some learn uh, interesting thing. Uh huh. I learned some interesting you, things. I learned some interesting things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys want to, or you want to, teacher, <laughs> I can uh, share with you. <laughs> that would be great, Haida. I'd love that. But would you wait until we've read the relevant part? in the article and then we'll come back to you so that we all know what we're talking about. Is that okay? Okay. All right, otherwise it might be a bit out of context and we may not understand fully because um, I don't know if everybody's read the article yet. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thanks Haida. I'll get back to you. If I forget, please <laughs> please remind me because sometimes I get really engrossed in what we're doing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I will, I promise. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, okay, so we'll just say hi to Eduardo. Hi, Eduardo. Hello, I miss. Sorry for being late. <laughs> no problem. Are you? How are you doing? Have you been following the football? We've all been talking about the football this morning. Okay, perfect. Yeah, England and Spain uh, haven't done really well, but yeah, uh, it's less interesting when our team is not in the competition anymore. But yeah, I like football. Yeah. yeah? Well, I don't find it interesting anyway. Um, <laughs> so when my team gets knocked out, that's oh, it's all over for me. <laughs> no, no. I like to keep um, keep an eye on um, what's happening. I sometimes think it's cool when you know the the typical boring traditional teams 
don't do what people expect, and then it gives other teams a chance. So it's kind of, in a way, it's more interesting when this kind of thing happens. Yeah, of course, there are always surprises. Yeah. Yes, exactly. All right, well, welcome to the class, Eduardo. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about Iran today, guys. Before we have a look at the article, I've done what I usually do, and I've got actually quite a, list, quite a bit of information about Iran, because I personally um, didn't know a lot about this country. Um, however, I do find it quite fascinating, um, and I'm going to post something into the chat box um, to read first of all. It's just a little introduction straight from Wikipedia, but it's, um, it tells us some stuff which you guys may not know. Um, I certainly didn't, um, so what I'm going to do is get, um, I'll get Haida to read this. We'll go backwards in order today. Um, if you could, can you see what's there in the chat box, Haida? Uh, I, sure, excuse I'm, me. I'm going to read chat box. Yes. Okay. Iran. Teacher. Uh, Just a second, Haida. Just a second. Yeah, can you put yes. it, Can you put it please in the group chat also? Yeah, I'll put it in both of the chat boxes. There we yeah. go. Okay, thank you. I, read, uh, I was expecting to read BBC, but <laughs> this will go to. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. you, can, you will read some BBC stuff in a moment, Haidar. This is just a little introduction on the country, okay? Okay, then. Iran, also known as Persia, uh, of, officially the Islamic Republic of Iran, is a country in West, Western uh, Asia. It is bordered on the north by Turkmenistan, with Kazakhstan and Russia, across the Caspian Sea, on the east by Afghanistan and Pakistan. On the south by uh, the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. On the west by Iraq uh, and on the northwest by Armenia, uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey. Compressing a land or area of... This is too much. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to read out that number for Haida? One billion... Uh, six... Uh, 648 and uh, 195 kilometer. <laughs> it's uh, it squared. is squared. Kilometers is squared. Kilometer square. Yeah. It is the second largest nation in the Middle East and the 18th large uh, largest in the world, with over 77 million inhabit in inhabitants. Iran is the world's uh, 17th, 17th most populous nation. <laughs> it is the only country that has both a Caspian Sea and Indian Ocean coastline. Iran has been of geostrategic, uh, geostrategic, geostrategic, <laughs> geostrategic. Uh, geostrategic, yeah, geostrategic. I lost where I... Importance. I yeah. Importance because of the, is, uh, its central location is in uh, Euro, 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 Eurasia, Eurasia? Mm -hmm. Eurasia and West, Western Asia and the Strait of Hormuz. Iran is home to one of the world's oldest civilization. Uh, keep, keep I continue? <laughs> Yes, because those are just references from Wikipedia. Ignore the numbers. Beginning. Are you still there, Haida? Hmm. Interesting. Would anyone like to take over from Haida? Yes, teacher. Thank you, Allah. I'm not sure what's happened to him. He suddenly disappeared. We'll hope mm. he comes back. Um, could you read from Iran is home to one of the world's oldest civilizations? Continue yeah. from there. Thank you. Uh, Iran, Iran is the home 
Iran is home to one of the world's oldest civilizations, beginning with the formation of the proto proto uh, Elamite and Elamite kingdom in 3200 to uh, 2800 uh, BCE, BCE. Tehran is the capital and largest city, serving as the cultural, commercial, and industrial center uh, of the of the nation. Iran is a major regional and middle power, exerting considerable influence in international energy, energy security, and the world economy through its large reserves of fossil fuels, which include the largest natural gas supply in the world and the fourth largest and and uh, sorry uh, uh, and the fourth largest proven pr uh, petroleum reserves. Globally, it ranks eighth in the world for the amount of books published per year and was ranked first in scientific progress in the world in 2011. A multicultural nation comprising numerous ethnic and linguistic groups, uh, most inhabitants are Shiites. Shi shi the Iranian uh, inhabits our sheets. The Iranian mm -hmm. real is its currency. Uh, Iranian real is its currency. And Persian is the official language. And Persian Perfect. is the official language. Yes. Thank you, Allah. Beautiful reading. Yeah. Um, just one, just one tiny comment. Is fossil fuels? Fossil fuels. Fossil. Fossil. Okay. All right, so there's a lot of information about that country um, covering lots of different things. It's history, which is obviously extremely long. Um, it's population. I didn't realize that it had such a large population myself. Um, and its technological progress is amazing. Um, so there's a general information. Did it, does anyone have any questions about vocabulary or meaning of anything in there before we start our article? No? All right, guys. In that case, what we'll do, I'll give you the link. Um, sometimes you, it's easier for you to just load this in your own window. Otherwise, I'm going to screen share with you just so that we can follow it together. Um, okay, so what you want to see is this website here. I'll zoom in for you. Um, we've got some really, really beautiful pictures, which you might want to flick through um, yourself. Have a look, you just click on these arrows here. Um, but what we have is the title, and I'll get Kako to read the title for us, please. Chasing Shadows and Light in, a, in Iran. In Iran. Oh. Yep, great, thank you. Okay, so we'll scroll down to where the text begins, and let me just um, tell you what how this class will work. So. Um, I will ask you to read probably um, a slightly longer piece today because there's only a few of us, which gives you a bit more practice. And um, just read it with, with concentration on your pronunciation. Um, I will help you and correct you after you've read if there's anything I need to say. And then we'll talk about vocabulary and the meaning together before we go on to the next section. So since we've already had um, Haidar's disappeared, I wonder where he's got to. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Um, thank you, Alar. I'll go on to Karko and get you to read a little bit more. So if you could start us off, please. Okay, teacher. In the garden courtyard of Esfahan's famous Abazi Hotel, surrounded by 300-year-old caravan serai-style rooms, I was in the company of an Iranian architect. We were discussing my plan to travel to the desert, to the desert towns of Kashan, Nain, Garmei, and Yazd. All those pla all those places, his face lit up. His face lit up. It's like chasing shadows and light when you go there. 
when you go there, these words would stay with me during my journey to these towns where 3,000 years of generations have adapted to the environment to create a unique style of desert living. Beautifully read. Thank you, Kako. Um, I really like the way you take your time when you're reading and your pronunciation is excellent. So well yeah. done. Your intonation is really good as well. This Thank word you, here. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, you pronounced this correctly, but I just wanted to point it out because it's going to be coming up a couple more times, I believe. Um, you pronounced it desert, which is correct. And I'm just going to put the other confusing word in the chat box, which is dessert. That's the thing that you eat after your main meal. Just to um, clarify, those words can sometimes trip up some people, but they didn't trip you up, Carco, so well done. Okay, are there any questions about any of the words or meaning there? Why is it shadows in plural and light in singular? Very interesting question. Um, I suppose if you use lights in the plural, it gives the idea that you've got different types of lights, as in the lights that you switch on. And generally, if we're talking about the way that light looks on things, like in photography or art, we use it in the singular. Um, and shadows, I suppose it could have been either, really. Um, but, but because we use it in the plural, I guess it gives the idea that there's more than one shadow to look at. Um, you could say shadow and light, but you wouldn't really say lights. So I think that's my explanation for it. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? No? All right, well, let's get started on the journey so we can find out a bit more. Um, Eduardo, could you take over for us, please, from I started? Okay. I started in the beautiful city of Kashan with seeds where Iran's vast desert dust a kafir begins. Located just 250 kilometers southeast of Tehran, it's often overlooked by travelers heading for the big attractions further south, such as Sivas and Fahan. Built from unbaked mud brick, the, pre the presence of shadow and light was evident from the very moment. I stepped into the old city in search of Aksan Hotel, one of the famous 19th century traditional houses that were built by wealthy merchants at the height of the lucrative Qajar dynasty, when Kashan was a bustling commercial hub. hub. Most houses have seen disappear, but some have been repaired and are open to the public. Wonderful reading again from you, Eduardo. Thank you. Um, just uh, just an, um, because Carco, you and Eduardo have read with great intonation and, and really good pronunciation, um, what I would suggest that you can do to improve your reading from now on is just try to notice um, when words can connect to each other a little bit more. So um, you're pronouncing each word correctly by itself, but when it's in the context of a sentence, um, it's much smoother to, smoother to listen to if you can try and connect up your words a little bit. And this is probably a more difficult challenge, um, but it's worth, worth working on um, because it becomes easier to speak, but also easier for me to understand you. Not that I'm having a problem, it just is, is sort of nicer to the ear, shall we say. So let me give you an example. If one word ends with a consonant and the next begins with a vowel, such as here, big attractions, um, generally we can kind of merge these two words together so that it becomes big attractions. Um, okay. Same here with, for example, such, the ch consonant such sound as. with the a. Exactly, yeah. Um, 
So keep your eye out for that, and we'll have another turn in a moment, OK? <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, guys, so questions about vocabulary or meaning? No one? Excellent. All right. Well, I did want to ask you, actually. I forgot to do this at the beginning. But has anyone ever been to Iran? Nope. No? Um, I suppose it's not particularly top on the holiday destinations for a number of reasons. But I do have a friend who, who went there for six months, and she said it was stunning. Um, and it's well underrated. Um, so... Yeah, just interesting to find out about it. And there's some great photos. So there's one of them. We'll go down to here and we'll get um, Allah to read again for us, please, Allah, from here. Uh, I walked down a passageway, cut into the earth, and entered the insulated, insulated private space through a heavy wooden door with two different sized knockers. Traditionally, one for women and one for men, so the inhabitants could always tell who should answer the door. I emerged about 10 meters below street level into a large courtyard, lush with water gardens, uh, pomegranate, uh, pomegranate trees, and tea beds made from raised wooden platforms, car uh, carpeted and laid with cushions. Keep going. Uh, Ihsan Hotel was located almost at the entrance of the Mindering uh, Kashan Bazaar. Uh, once rested in my evo uh, evocative surroundings, I climbed once more to street level, turned left, and followed the narrow lanes directly to its cavernous entrance. Great. The uh, bazaar. Great. That we'll pause there just for a moment, otherwise it's a little bit too much to take in. Um, Okay, so I was just going to say, I've got a class today. What a pleasure. Okay. Um, Alar, really, really lovely. A couple of really small things, but because I'm a perfectionist, I want all my students to be perfect, so I'll tell you them anyway, okay? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all right, so what I just mentioned to the other two is um, one of the things that we do is connect up our words together a bit. Um, the pronunciation of the word the, you probably know this, but if it comes before a consonant word such as fashion, and um, we pronounce it the, but if it comes before a vowel, we change the pronunciation to the, so it would be the elephant, mm. right? Okay. So you can keep an eye on this while you're reading, because we had two instances of this today, or just now, the insulated, mm -hmm. would you like the to insulated. repeat it? Yeah. The so you, yes, that's absolutely right, Ally. You can even connect the words even more so that there's no space, there's no breath. It's just the insulated. The insulated. That's great. Perfect. And this one here, the entrance. The entrance. Beautiful. Okay, that's what I mean. Um, there was a few other words, so let me get them now. Here we go. This one here is cushions. 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 Yeah. Cushions. Mm -hmm. And this one is such a nice word. It's one of my favorite words ever. Meandering. 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 Yes. Meandering. Can anyone tell me what, what meandering means? What's a new yes. word? Okay. No, no, it's uh, new for me. I don't know. Okay. Eduardo, can you tell us? Yeah, I think it's pretty similar to a Spanish word for weavers who are like a snake with a lot yes. of verbs, like sinuous. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it means like um, sort of twisting and turning or winding. Um, and we use it, yeah, to describe rivers or streams or paths. It means it's not straight, but it goes sort of turning, turning, turning. Um, and with a river, if you look at it from above, it's sort of like a really beautiful pattern, I think, anyway. Um, and then the last one here, Allah, was evocative. Evocative. Beautiful, evocative. perfect. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Thank um, you. Any questions about vocab or meaning, guys? For any of the other words? 
knockers, is knockers similar to ring, teacher? Similar to what, Kako? A ring? Ring on the door. Yeah, a doorbell, you mean. A, a doorbell, okay, okay. Yeah, Thank a you. doorbell is the thing that goes ding dong, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And a knocker okay. is the thing you use instead of ringing, you can knock, right? That noise. Um, you have a knocker. The knocker's the thing you hold on to to make the tapping noise on the door. Exactly. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so this is rather cool or interesting for me. Um, they have two different sized knockers. So depending on which one is used, either a woman or a man has to answer the door. Um, so that's a cultural thing. Um, it's strange, no? I mean, yeah. because maybe it's because of the size, uh, they one make more noise or a different noise, I suppose, metal or wood. I don't know Absolutely. how they do that. Yeah. I was wondering the same thing, Eduardo, but I, I imagine the same as you. It's probably... Um, maybe if one's bigger, it makes a different sound, and then you can recognize it. But <laughs> yeah, I make uh, a man knocks uh, strongly, no? Yeah, and a woman's and a woman. little tap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, maybe the man the knocker uh, is heavier than the woman. Yeah, po perhaps a lot. Yeah. Uh, by the paragraph, I I think that. Uh, is not allowed to men um, to receive to to receive uh, to speak with a woman uh, when re receiving them uh, at the door. Yeah. The oh, women are re answering. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Kako. I just was going to say we usually say to answer the door. Or to receive a guest, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, exactly. I believe that that's correct. I don't know if anyone can enlighten me, but I think that um, if a man comes to the door, then a woman is not allowed to answer it, right? Uh, it's uh, somehow it's a closed society in Iran. Uh, it's um, very conservative in, the, in these meanings. So, yes... Uh, there is uh, always a separation between yes, uh, the genders or like that. Yeah, so it's kind of amazing really. I'd never, it would never occur to me to do this, um, but amazing different cultures. Okay, so any other questions about this section? Does anyone know what the word evocative means? Yes, like inspiring. Inspiring? Make, yeah. Make you feel things? Yes, that's more <laughs> like it. Yeah. It makes you feel things. I like that, Eduardo. Um, the word itself is a nice word, but yes, if something's evocative, it brings feelings into you. Um, or maybe memories or something as well. Okay, so thank you, Allah. We'll go back to Kako, and it's your turn to read from the bazaar, please, Kako. The bazaar is one of the most beautiful and authentic in all the Iran. A series of interconnected pass passages and covered domes, perfect for endless wandering. Shafts of sunlight entered through geometric skylights at the center of each vault, creating a smoky haze, a smoke haze in front of a bakery where thin slabs of bread were being baked on a bed of small pebbles in a domed oven, oven, in a domed oven. The air was heavy with the scent of spices mingling with rose water and dried 
apricots. And go can. ahead, teacher. Yep. It was while wandering the bazaar that I stumbled across the soaring and heavenly dawn of Kanamin al Dalai Tinti. This grand covered court built in 1868 as a caravanserai for camel trains featured a patterned tiled vault rising high above the Kashani shopkeeper who were going about their regular business, making tea, dozing on chairs, and carrying carpets. In the okay. corner... Okay, well, teacher. Sorry, Kaka, we'll pause there just because it's probably a little bit much. Um, another beautifully read piece. Um, I noticed that you... and I've been checking out your word connection in that. Um, which is why I just had a pause there for a moment. But you've done really well. So you're, there were some really beautifully read bits. Um, and you've connected little words such as in all or in all of. That was beautiful. So um, another one that, that I stumbled or that I stumbled across. Really great. Um, there's one word that came up a lot of times in this one, Kako, which is of. And this is a really good word to remember as one that you can connect up with the previous word because it begins with a vowel, right? And generally, there's going to be some kind of a consonant coming beforehand or a consonant sound. So most of the time when you see the word of, um, you can connect it. So let me give you an example. We have one of, um, we have a series of, shafts of, um, center of. Each time you have this coming up, you don't need to leave a space in between the two words. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight a few for you. If you can repeat them, and this time try and connect them together. So sorry, there we go. Your first one. One of. Perfect. Series of. Good. Shaft is of. Yes, that's better. Center of. Yep. In front of. Yep. The scent of. That's much better, Kako. If you can look out for that word next time you do some reading, um, maybe it'll remind you because it's one of the one of the typical words that you can use. Another one is in, so we had a couple of examples, like for example, built in, instead of built in. Um, but of is a good one to remember, so well done. Okay, we'll just quickly say hi to Jenna, because I know that you popped in earlier, Jenna. How are you? Welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, we're just reading about the country Iran. Mm -hmm. Have you been following our class? Uh... Yeah, I just uh, yeah, I was here earlier, but my brother told me to go downstairs to do something, so I so I just heard <laughs> the last paragraph and saw. All right, that's okay. We we've just been traveling a little bit through some of the cities, and the theme is sort of shadows and light, and how it's how it's reflected in the places that we're virtually visiting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're just talking about these two paragraphs here, and then I'll get you to read, Jenna. Um, does anyone have any questions about meaning, guys? Yes, I have a couple. Sure. Okay, I'm related with construction. I'm, I'm a civil engineer, so is, is this <laughs> interesting. Uh, uh, the first one is shafts, mm -hmm. because it seems like it's, it's not only the, the hole in the roof. It's all the way of the sunlight going down, or what? That's correct. Yeah, a shaft of light is almost like a collocation, Eduardo, that we use to describe um, the when when a sort of like a line almost of light is created because light is coming through some kind of a hole, um, and we the line that you can see is we call a shaft. Okay, like a beam, but 
through a hole, no? In yes, a exactly right, yeah. Okay. And the second one is slabs. Uh, slab. Because sets slabs of bread, and I use a, a slab for foundation when I have a big uh, piece of concrete with a lot of yep. volume, you know? Yeah, uh -huh. I call it. So slabs of bread made me confused, yeah. Um, well, actually, Eduardo, you're absolutely right. A slab of concrete is, is typical to say. It just is used in this context, I think, to give the idea that the bread is flat and big and possibly quite dense. So it's, in, in a way, it, like as if it were concrete, exactly like what you imagine. Okay, okay. It's not a typical phrase to use for bread. So the reason he used it, I guess, is to give us the idea of what type of bread this is. Okay. Great questions from Eduardo, always. Okay. Um, <laughs> any other questions? From anybody? No? Okay. Um, we're getting a really nice, well, I am, certainly, a really nice mental atmosphere of this beautiful country. Okay, so Jenna, if you could please read for us in the corner. Um, okay. In the corner where antique sellers resided was a narrow staircase leading up to the bazaar's roof. It was worth the climb to witness just how good the Persians were at building with mud. I clamber across the smooth, um, how do you say the word again? Undulating. Uh, undulating marble dooms, marveling at the design and shapes. And the fact that an entire market was in operation below me was just a few thick layers of earthen, oh, sorry, uh, just a few thick layers of earth between us. Great. Um, Jenna, thank you. Um, this part here is domes. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Um, and really great reading. So your pronunciation is is um, is really nice. I can understand you easily. Um, what I would say is that just be be aware if you're the intonation inside your sentences. So. What we need to do, what you can do to, to improve your reading a little bit is to try and split up the sentence into um, sort of phrases, each with their own bit of meaning. And I know it's really hard to do the first time you've ever read something. It's much easier once you get the idea. But that should be something to keep in mind, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what happened is last time I was reading really fast in the different class, and the teacher uh -huh. was telling me because I speak too fast, I read too fast, so they can, <laughs> cannot hear the end sound, so I try to pause every time. <laughs> so that's what happened. Yeah. I, I see, I, I understand, I understand. Um, it's a, I think it's a good advice, yeah, if you, <laughs> although to be honest, when you speak fast it sounds fine to me, but um, in that case, use the, use the um, punctuation to help you, okay? So try to like pause when there's a comma or a full stop, and in between those bits, you could just flow through. Yeah, that's what I'd okay. do. Right. Thank you. No worries. Okay, questions about vocab, guys. Anything? I think um, interesting the, the expression in the corner, because I have only, only seen um, uh, on the corner uh, when when giving direction to a person on the corner and in this text uh, that is in the corner I, I think there is um, between the corner um, uh, in the interior of the corner um, yeah yeah that's correct Kako well done yeah we usually say on the corner if we're talking about something outside right a building yeah. or something the park is on the corner, correct. If we say in the corner, yeah, you're, in, you're inside some area. It may not actually be inside the roof, but it's within some kind of um, boundary that you're discussing. Um, so we're talking about this general area, therefore he says in the corner. 
Correct. Or if you're actually inside, like in the corner of the room, perhaps. Yeah. Yes, I am in the corner of my my room. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. Any other comments or questions? No. If you have a look at the picture, it's kind of amazing to me. It just looks. I mean, that's made out of mud, but it just looks so well built. Um, so smooth and, and these parts here just look so sturdy. I don't know how they do it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's okay. very interesting how they used uh, mud um, and baked uh, mud bricks as, as it was said on the first paragraph, on one of the first paragraphs yeah, in, the, in here. Um, yeah, very interesting how these buildings um, um, con uh, follows uh, until uh, so far have lasted. How, how they've lasted. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, I agree, Carco. It's kind. Of, it's amazing, really. Um. Yeah, fascinating how, how beautiful the architecture is when it's made out of mud. <laughs> so I agree with you. All right, it must be Eduardo's turn to read again then. So Eduardo, here from Back Safely in the Shadows. Okay, Back Safely in the Shadows, I descend this, descended a staircase into the depths of the bazaar. Seeking out the Haman Ekan tea house, actually a 300 year old bathhouse. There are many bathhouses left in Iran, the owner said. By death, they've all closed down. People don't go to the bathhouse any, anymore. He explained that it's too expensive to hit the water. And in modern Iran, most people just use their home bathrooms. Shall I continue? Okay. Yes, please. He inherited the bathhouse from his father, but transformed it, transformed in it into a tea house in order to make an income. It fell slightly hipster, decorated with 1950s furniture, old radios, and sheep skin rugs, and was a popular place for hookah and strong. Cinnamon spiced coffee, spiced coffee. His specialty dish is kaski badenjan, delicious, sweet, and spicy roast, roasted eggplant stew served with fresh bread. Eduardo, well done. Um, you really um, managed to connect up lots of your little phrases in that. Well done, excellent reading. Shoot me with everything. <laughs> I'm <beside>. Okay. <laughs> this is cinnamon spiced. 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 Okay. That's yeah. better. Get yeah. Um, and what I mainly noticed, Eduardo, was that um, with these little prepositional phrases, like into the depths of, or um, the, the ones that don't have a lot of, um, don't have a lot of evocative meaning, all the kind of boring connection bits, you really read well. Um, it's just the more sort of unusual words or the nouns that you could still work on connecting up with each other, okay? Okay. Yeah. In general, in general. All right, well done. Any questions? Stew. Stew, like what plant, is... Like plant is stew. It's stew. Okay, somebody must know what stew is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eggplant is a vegetable and a stew is like a broth with when you put maybe meat or broth is with this maybe so stew is with meat and you boil it with other spe uh, species and maybe spices. potatoes spices sorry, and maybe potatoes and, and or eggplant <laughs> and you have a beautiful meal to eat with a spoon and heat meal no? Yeah. Hot. Yep, absolutely. Hot. 
So stew basically has liquid around it. Um, that's the thing which defines it from, say, I don't know. Um, okay, the difference between soup and stew is that soup um, generally has more liquid and stew has a little bit less. Um, but yeah, Eduardo's exactly right there. An eggplant is um, a vegetable. It's like a purple bulbous type thing. Um, inside it's like creamy white colour. I'm sure you probably know what it is. Yeah, if in very your own language. smooth surface of the... Yes, yeah. and shiny generally, right? <laughs> At least the outside is. And as aubergine a really... is other word, no, for yeah, eggplant? Yeah, that's correct. In fact, usually we do say aubergine in the UK. Um, an eggplant is generally the Australian or um, American word, but yeah, we use them interchangeably a little bit. So what's the difference between a broth and a stew? Is fish a meat or not? Or... To be honest, Eduardo, I'm not entirely sure scientifically what's the difference. Generally, though, I'd say that broth is more liquid. It makes, it's like for soup. me, okay. like soup. Yeah. Um, but broth is, is not a thick soup. It's a clear soup with stuff in it floating in it. And stew okay. would be um, more substantial, like it would fill you up more because it's got more meat, less liquid. Okay. And Carco has given us a link of different images of stew in case you want to look it up, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Carco. <laughs> uh, and there's a picture. Jenna, yeah. I have a question. Uh, I put the phrase on the chat box. Um, I'm really uh, worried about uh, how I pronounce the answer. Can you pronounce it for me? Just try to compare. So how I, pronounce it and how I, pronounce I think it. you mean transformed rather. You missed out the S, Jenna. Oh, because from the phrase it says transformed. It has E D. Oh yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. it is. So, so can you pronounce it again for me? Sure. Transformed it. Transformed it. So just basically connect the D with I, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Thank you. I was talking to the others about that earlier. I don't know whether you were there. Um, but it does help your English to be more fluid and nicer to listen to. Although, Jenna, you're already really good with that. You have a very nice um, American accent. Yeah. yeah. I want to be really be careful with it because sometimes I do know if I didn't pronounce the ed word, and some people confuse with what I mean. Yeah, it's very important because obviously it's an indicator of the past tense. Um, so it tends to be. What's your nationality, Jenna? Chinese. I, yeah, I can I can sort of almost tell um, that you're very Americanized in your speaking. So it's very nice for me to listen to, but. It's a tendency for Chinese speakers to miss out the uh, um, the past tense indicators. I don't know why. Perhaps it's because of the nature of Chinese. No tenses. I don't know. But yeah, anyway. We don't have past tense. We don't have past I know. Tense. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that's why. Your brains are like, what? Past tense? Huh? <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, Jenna, could you read this one here for us, please? Okay. Uh, okay. I easily passed... A few hours in the cool san uh, sanctuary of the tea house with my apple flavored hookah, listening to the gentle water fountain and chatting with the owner. Thank you. Brilliant. All right. I'm going to click onto the next page. We've got a couple more minutes, so I'll get Allah if you could read one more piece for us before we finish the class. That would be great. So from Kashan. <coughs> Kashan had everything I needed. Uh, hideouts, tea beds, and an old world charm. But I was eager to venture further into the desert. About 200 kilometers east, Nain is a small city that spills into the, da the, the dashed Ikavir. The old mud brick houses crumbling and forgotten in the face of moder uh, Mudris. Uh, modernization modern station modern station I could still see the beautiful arched doorways and the huge storage pots pu uh, uh, pu uh, pureed in the mounds of desert soil 
that once shaped the walls of these houses. Pomegranate trees that would have once been part of a beautiful garden still pushed through the earth to fruit amid all the rubble. It was only 40 years ago that this neighborhood in the north of Nain would have been lively and inhabited. But in the 1979 Iranian Revolution and the more recent allure of the new apartments led to the abandon, uh, uh, abandonment of these high maintenance mud mansions. Well done, uh, Allah. Great. Um, this one here, a bit tricky. It's modernization. Modernize, modernization? Modernization. Yes. Modernization. Yes, absolutely. And then this one is a bit difficult to remember because it doesn't look like it sounds at all, but it's actually buried. 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 Yeah. So the word berry actually rhymes with the word very, and most of you, I'm mm. sure, are familiar with very, so maybe that's um, easier for you to remember. For some reason, it's spelt with a U. Okay, so before we go, any questions about this section, guys? Vocabulary or meaning? No? Okay, um, what I would suggest is that you guys finish off reading this because it is very interesting. I found it fascinating to read all about Iran. If you do have any questions um, about any of the words that you come across or you can't figure out meanings of any of the phrases, then do write me a little message or post something on Facebook and I'll get back to you about it um, because I think it's a great article and it's got a little bit more and some also some more beautiful images so don't forget to check those out. Um, if you want to practice your writing do come along to my next class where we're going to be writing about friends. Um, it's going to be fun, you can practice um, doing some writing and using some of these new words that you've been learning hopefully in your English classes. So other than that guys, if I don't see you soon, I hope to see you at some point and take care and enjoy the football if you're a football fan. Um, and good luck to all those teams who are still in it. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. All right. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank bye bye. You.